Pandorum is a 2009 science fiction horror film with elements of Lovecraftian horror and survival adventure. It's a great little sci-fi film that is well worth a watch. This review may contain scenes of simulated graphic violence and is suitable for mature audiences only. So if you are ready, spoilers ahead. The film begins with a timeline, which states that in the future Earth has grown overpopulated and humanity has fought over the last natural resources. In the year 2174, a ship called Elysium was sent out to colonize an Earth-like planet called Tannis. In space, we see the massive ship flying towards the stars. On the bridge of the ship, we see officers including Gallo receiving a message from Earth. The message is you're all that's left of us. Next, we see Bauer wake up from his hypersleep pod. He manages to free himself from the pod and rips out the tubes going into his body. He sees that he has a series of numbers tattooed on his arm. After peeling away his dead skin, I'm guessing it's dead skin, but it's not a good look anyway. He sees that he is alone and reads that memory loss can be a side effect of long-term hypersleep. Not knowing what's going on, he finds a locker with his name on it and puts on some clothes. He finds a picture of his wife. He notices a couple of other pods are nearby. A pod for Cooper is empty. Another pod still has Peyton inside. Bauer tries to wake Peyton up, but can hardly make a scratch in the sealed pod. He tries to open the door of the room, but it's locked. A power surge shakes the ship, causing Peyton to wake up. Both men suffer from memory loss. Peyton is a lieutenant and Bauer is a corporal. It turns out that since the trip to Tannies would take over 100 years, the crew has been split into groups and shifts in order to work over the long travel period. At the end of a group's turn after a couple of years, they are supposed to wake up the next group and debrief them. They realize that something's gone horribly wrong. The numbers tattooed on their arms indicate which group they belong to. Another power surge shakes the ship, and Bauer realizes that he's the engineer. Something's wrong with the reactor, and he needs to fix it. Peyton gets a nearby command center working by using the auxiliary power. He tries to call for help, but no one answers. They hear a noise coming from a nearby vent. Peyton decides that they need to find any crew members and get to the bridge to see what's happening. He sends Bauer to find a way out in the vents while he stays behind at the command center to guide him around the ship. The vents are filled with tubes and are hard to crawl through. Bauer tries to find his way to another room, but the vents look endless and run in every direction. After feeling like he's going in circles, he panics and becomes claustrophobic. Peyton via radio calms Bauer down by joking that he got the door open. Bauer falls down a shaft and lands face first on a grate. The fall causes him to lose contact with Peyton. Bauer turns on a glow stick and sees that Cooper's decomposing corpse is right next to him. He falls through the grate and ends up in a storage compartment. Bauer gets up but still can't communicate with Peyton. The ship corridors are long and dark. While searching around, Bauer comes across a woman trying to open a door. He tries to talk to her, but she quickly runs away. While chasing after her, he sees that she is seemingly stopped in a corridor. He tries to tell her that he's part of the crew and he needs to know what's going on. She remains silent. He shines his light on the figure and sees that it's not a woman but a man, a man who has been hung and is missing most of his lower half. The woman, Nadia, pops up and attacks Bauer. She holds him down and orders him to remove his shoes. Suddenly, they both hear screeching nearby. Nadia runs away while Bauer is left confused. He sees a blue light at the end of the corridor and the screeching gets louder. The blue light is attached to a creature, which goes after Bauer. The half-eaten man is pulled up and devoured. Bauer runs back to the room he came through and hides in the storage compartment. While the creature looks for him, Peyton's voice comes through the radio. The creature tears open the compartment and snatches Cooper's body. After the creature leaves, Bauer tells Peyton that something not human is on board the ship. Bauer then remembers his wife. At first, he thinks that she stayed behind on Earth, but he remembers that families of the crew were allowed to travel on the ship. Bauer becomes desperate to find her before the creatures do. He also remembers that Peyton has a wife as well. Peyton tries to convince him to continue making his way to the reactor. If Bauer can fix it, the power will come back on for the ship and they can implement security measures. Bauer looks around and finds a security room. He finds an anti-riot gun and straps it to his arm. Bauer wonders if he has Pandorum, which is a mental disease that affects people after an extended period of time and space. Peyton remembers the biggest disaster in space travel history. A ship called Eden was traveling when one of the officers got Pandorum. He ejected thousands of people from the ship, killing everyone. He goes into the corridors again and sees a hanged man. He thinks that he's going crazy since it looks like the same hanged man from before. However, upon closer inspection he finds that the man is different and that he's still alive and in one piece. Bauer cuts him down and is introduced to Shepard. Shepard is part of another group and has been by himself for a long time. 
Bauer says that his commanding officer wants to know what's happening. Shepard says that there is no commanding officer and covers himself in oil to cover his scent from the creatures. He tries to leave but sees blue lights coming towards them. The creatures chase Bauer and Shepard through the ship. The creatures are incredibly fast and have sharp weapons. They eventually string Shepard back up and eat him. Bauer tries to shoot the creatures, but his shot is blocked by a door. The creatures see him and chase after him. He runs into Man, who helps him escape from them. Bauer can't understand Man's language but still manages to communicate that he's part of the crew. He sees Man's tattoo and sees that he's part of the agriculture crew. He tells him that he's going to start up the reactor and tells Man to stay put. Meanwhile, Peyton starts to get a bloody nose and gets increasingly concerned that he can't contact Corporal Bauer. Bauer finds a large cargo container that acts as a living quarters. He sees that there are several other containers as well. Bauer is attacked by Nadia again, who pins him down and threatens him with a knife. Man pops up and defends Bauer. As Nadia and Man fight, Bauer fires off a shot into the air. He tells them that he understands they want to survive, but to do so they need to stay together as a team. Nadia eventually agrees and the trio makes their way through the ship. Bauer tells Nadia that they need to start the reactor or else they'll all die. Nadia says that no one has ever come back from the reactor room. However, since she knows the way, she'll lead him to it. They come across a hallway and find themselves surrounded by creatures. A power surge shakes the ship, allowing Nadia to activate a door. They barely make it inside and seal the door. Nadia has been living in the room since she woke up. She's a biologist and says that the ship is pretty much like Noah's Ark. In addition to the 60,000 people on board, there is DNA stored for all the organisms found on Earth. Bauer and Nadia eat insects due to lack of food. During this time, Peyton continues to hear more and more noise coming from the vent. He grabs a pipe and approaches it. A human arm reaches out for him. It's Gallo, who's naked and covered in blood and slime. Peyton pulls him through and locks the vent. Gallo says that he's from the bridge before passing out. After a while, Nadia leads the team through a part of the ship that holds civilian pods. Bauer notices that the majority of the pods are empty. Nadia tells him that it's the creature's feeding ground and tells them to hurry. Bauer wonders if his wife is there, but Nadia tells him that the families of the crew are held in another area of the ship. Bauer suddenly disappears. Nadia walks over to where he was and falls down a grate. Bauer lights up a glow stick and they both see that they've fallen into a massive pit of bodies. The creatures appear and move through the area. Bauer climbs out of the pit first but keeps Nadia at bay. While he looks around, he's attacked by a creature. Bauer is thrashed around and Man comes to defend him again. He stabs the creature in the head, but it's still alive. Tough little bastard. Nadia manages to stab it in the leg but is tossed around as well. Bauer manages to stab it in the chest, and the team repeatedly stabs it until it's dead. Finally, the other creatures come back and see them. A man wakes up from his pod and is immediately stabbed in the head and eaten by the creatures. Rise and shine, welcome to, oh, never mind. While Gallo is passed out, Peyton inspects his arm and sees that he's part of the previous group. Gallo wakes up and asks Peyton what he's doing. Some of the blood on Gallo is from someone else, which makes Peyton suspicious. Gallo says that he was with two other crew members, but they suffered from Pandorum and he was forced to kill them. Peyton loads a needle gun with a shot to calm Gallo down, but he refuses to take it. The team takes refuge in a room and seal the door shut. Bauer and his team find that they are not alone. Leland has been living in the room for some time now. Leland is situated on a balcony above the team so that they can't reach him. He makes them some food and welcomes them to his home. While Nadia bandages a wound, she tells Bauer that she thinks the creatures are actually mutants. In all the hypersleep pods, everyone was supplied with an accelerator that was supposed to help them adapt to Tannies. Instead, it could have made some people mutate and adapt to the ship. Gallo tells Peyton that Earth was destroyed. The thousands of people on the ship are all that's left of humanity. Leland tells the team what happened afterwards. After Elysium received the final message from Earth and learned of its destruction, one of the crew members suffered from Pandorum. He killed his crew and then started to wake people up. He ruled over them like a king, and whenever someone disobeyed him he would banish them to a lower part of the ship. Eventually, he grew tired of his ruling and went back to hypersleep. However, over time the people he banished evolved and mutated into flesh-hungry creatures and adapted to the ship. As Leland tells his story, he fills the lower room with gas, knocking everyone out. Bauer wakes up to find himself, Nadia, and Man hung upside down in the room. Leland plans on eating them for food. What is it with people in the future and cannibalism? Nadia mouths off, and so Leland stabs her in the chest. He's about to fillet her when a power surge shakes the ship. Bauer convinces him that it was the last power surge, and if they don't start the reactor within the hour, everything in the ship will shut down for good. Leland cuts them down and makes them walk through the ship at gunpoint. Meanwhile, things get heated with Gallo and Peyton. Gallo thinks that they should evacuate the ship while they still can, but Peyton is confident that Bauer will fix the reactor. Gallo notices that Peyton is starting to exhibit signs of Pandorum. Peyton says that Gallo is crazy. 
On the way to the reactor, the team comes across a child creature. Nadia can't believe that the creatures are starting to mate. Man wants to kill the child, but Nadia keeps him from killing him. The creature child runs away. The team comes across the part of the ship that holds the pods for families of the crew. Bauer remembers that his wife isn't on the ship. He wanted her to go with him, but she refused. She left him, which caused him to sign up to be the engineer. He sees the pod for Peyton's wife and remembers her name. He also remembers something else about Peyton but keeps it quiet. The team makes it to the reactor but find that below it is the sleeping ground for the creatures. Bauer tries to walk across a catwalk to the reactor but it gives way. Man holds onto the catwalk while Nadia runs across to help Bauer. Seeing that Man can't hold the weight of both of them, Bauer allows himself to fall down to where the creatures are. Bauer covers himself with skin and slime so that the creatures won't pick up his scent. He then crawls amongst them to get to the ladder leading up to the reactor. Once he gets there, Leland accidentally drops a light down to where the creatures are, waking them all up. Leland runs away while Man drops the catwalk, crushing several of the creatures. He makes noises and leads the creatures away from Bauer and Nadia. Bauer climbs up to the reactor and turns on the generator, which fries some creatures in the process. Gallo takes control of the needle gun and forces Peyton to open his pod. Gallo has Peyton start the ejection sequence and gets inside. However, Peyton tricks Gallo and instead just locks him inside the pod. Elsewhere, Man manages to elude the creatures but then runs into the leader. The leader tosses Man a spear and they fight. The leader pins Man against a wall and starts to eat his stomach. Man grabs a knife and repeatedly stabs the leader in the head until it dies. Man then turns around to find the creature child staring at him. He contemplates killing the child, but lowers his knife. The child in turn slices Man's throat open and presumably eats him. Bauer turns on the reactor, providing power to the ship which opens the door to the bridge. Peyton is happy that Bauer succeeded, but then finds that Gallo has managed to escape from his pod. Gallo attacks Peyton and they fight for control over the needle gun. During the fight, their arms merge together. It's shown that Peyton is the only person there and has been fighting himself. After Peyton stabs himself in the leg, Leland winds up in the command center and Peyton promptly stabs him in the eye, killing him. Bauer and Nadia make it back to the bridge while being chased by creatures. They lock the door and find Peyton already there. Bauer knew Peyton's wife and knew the real Peyton. It's revealed that Peyton is actually Gallo. He had Pandorum and was interacting with a younger version of himself, how he looked when he first started working on the ship. And Gallo is the crazed king from Leland's story. When he went back to hypersleep, he got into Peyton's pod instead of his own. Bauer asks Gallo where exactly they are. After opening the window shields, all they can see is darkness. They've been on the ship for over 900 years. Gallo says that they can start a new society on the ship and he wants Bauer to join him. Bauer hallucinates about creatures trying to break into the bridge. Gallo wants him to give in to Pandorum. Then the group sees an alien fish swimming past the ship. They realize that Elysium has been on Tannies the entire time. They crash landed into an ocean and are underwater. Gallo chokes Bauer while Nadia defends him. Gallo beats Nadia and approaches her with a knife. Bauer, still hallucinating, shoots a compartment thinking that a mutant creature is coming through, causing a piece to crack the window. Bauer grabs Nadia and runs off. The windows break, flooding the ship with water and Gallo goes for a swim. Bauer and Nadia run back to Bauer's pod. They both get in and seal the door shut, but a lot of water gets in as well. The ship, experiencing a hull breach, conducts the evacuation plan and all the remaining pods are ejected. Bauer lets Nadia have his air mask while he almost drowns. The pod pops out of the surface of the ocean. Bauer and Nadia survive and look around the alien planet. Soon the rest of the pods pop out of the ocean and the remaining people start to wake up. The film ends with text, stating that the population on Tannies for the first year is 1,213 people. I hope you enjoyed my movie recap. Leave your comments below if you have seen Pandorum, or if you would like to watch it now. Take care, and see you next time.